a dragon fire over the enemies of Biafra. The fire will be raised to the highest since the launch of the Biafra Liberation Army. And uh, everybody know that uh, now we are in a different phase of this liberation to make sure our land, our women and children are protected at all costs. The Nigeria you see today, you shall see no more. I want everybody to understand that we know exactly what we're doing. When Mazen Amdikano was captured from Kenya, what we did was to make sure that the kidnap become very expensive. We started a plan to make sure that the kidnap is very, very expensive and very useless. And today we have achieved that. Not only that we achieved that, we went further to make sure that the reason why he was kidnapped were never achieved. The only reason why Mazen Amdikano was kidnapped from Kenya is to end Biafra, to end anything about Biafra. And in case, if they did not end anything about Biafra, and there are still remnant of people agitating for Biafra, people like you and me, the second plan, what is their plan B, was that they will convert everybody to start agitating for the release of Martin and the and abandon Biafra. That was the plan. And because we know their plan, and because I studied Nigeria very well, I did not come to this particular agitation by mistake. I studied Nigeria very, very well, like I graduated studying Nigeria. And ever since I was part of the Nigeria system, I was praying that God will give me opportunity to deal with Nigeria in the process of liberating Biafra. In as much as bad as it sounds, I would say the kidnap of Mazen Amdikano created that particular room for God to use me to deal with Nigeria. And I have not started. Everything they have done to our people, we will give them back 100 fold. And you can see that today. So what happened was that they kidnapped him. And the idea is so that everybody will talk about him, release, releasing him. And we know this particular plan they have. And I stood one place, I was observing everything for over six months to make sure that I am convinced before stepping up the game. First of all, I understand that the powerhouse of Nigeria economy is in the Southeast. Many of you do not understand why we insisted on sit at home. Many of you don't understand, as I'm talking to you today, there is no economics, there is no expert, financial expert, economic expert, anywhere in the world that will tell you the solution of Nigeria economic problem. Nobody. As I'm talking to you today, nobody in Nigeria, nobody in Europe, nobody in America, nobody anywhere in the world that will tell you this is where the problem of the economy of Nigeria is coming from. And this is the solution because we studied Nigeria, the system, the economic power, the economic system, what boasts the economy of Nigeria, we studied it. You know, they used to tell you that uh, Lagos is generating 300 billion or whatever. They tell you that one uh, river is generating this one and generating the one. The economic power of Nigeria is from the Southeast. Everything happening in Nigeria, Southeast is the one that define, project, policy, how Nigeria economy booms. This is the secret. I mean, and I'm saying this for the very first time. Yes. Since this whole thing started. Yes. This is the first time I'm saying this. Yes. And many people do not understand the reason why we insisted on the sit at home. One is that 
Biafra are self-made. The self-made of Biafra on the economic and the trade powers the economy of every region in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So any day you interfere the business happening in Biafra land by the Biafra people, you are attacking the regions, other regions. Because the business coming from Biafra land and Biafra people are the one powering other region in Nigeria. You do not understand this, but you know, the enemy that has fought this particular struggle since the kidnap of Mazinam the Kanu, the enemy that has fought it at home, understand this very well. That's why they have done everything. We stand on our ground. Many of you do not understand why Shetima came to the Southeast. The reason why we did not disturb them was to create that room for them to expose themselves. Otherwise, we will not allow them to sit and have meeting for one hour. I am telling you the fact. Any day, we don't want them to sit anywhere in any We will attack them. I'm not saying it hiding. We will attack them anywhere they gather. But we didn't do it because we want to give that opportunity for them to expose themselves. And Shetima indeed exposed himself. Expose that particular thing I know and learned about Nigeria, which is Southeast is the powerhouse of Nigeria economy. And you know what he said? He said, Nigeria economy can never be good until we fix South Southeast. He said, Nigeria, when once they fix Southeast, they fix Nigeria economy. Many people don't understand that. You don't understand why that thing is coming. They know the truth. Mm -hmm. And that fixing the economy is to stop the city at home. I am telling you the fact. Any day they succeed, in stopping this at home, you see Nigeria economy bounce back. But they tell you you are the one losing. Today, as as much as people are suffering in another part of Nigeria, protesting Ndibo that have been sitting at home for the past three years, for over three years now. No matter how hard, people are still feeding two times okay. and three times a day. The sit at home, when they sit at home, has not crashed everybody's economy in the southeast. I said. How much are you getting in 2021? How much did you? How much are you making every month when you go to shop, when you do your businesses? It does not affect you. I said those people that are bringing their money to buy things on Monday, if they don't come on Monday, they will come on Sunday. If they don't come on Sunday, they will come on Tuesday. But they have done everything black. Tell you how the thing is. Forget it. You are not losing anything. The government, Nigeria economy is losing. And not only that, the economy of Nigeria has crashed because of the sit at home, but also it is giving, creating these particular loopholes for the multinational corporation companies to flee. Because those companies that are not even having presence in the Southeast are being powered by the people of the Southeast. Anywhere you are, if you like, let your headquarters be in Sokoto and you are a business person or a business company or a multinational corporation that is doing business in Nigeria. It does not matter where you are. The people that are powering that your business are people from the Southeast. And everything is connected there. I am telling you the fact. That is why every person that wants Nigeria to go down must support sit at home because it creates insecurity. It creates fear. It creates the loopholes. It delegitimizes the terrorist government. It makes them look stupid in the international community. It makes people to lose trust on them. It makes the investors to run away, to know that Nigeria has become an anarchy state. It makes everybody who has invested in Nigeria to lose trust on Nigeria. That is our goal. We have achieved it. That's why many companies are folding up. Because apart from the fact that we have attacked the economy from the powerhouse, which is the Southeast. The people have lost confidence. Not only Biafra's losing confidence, the people who are coming in the name of, they want to invest, have lost confidence in the security, they have lost some confidence in the structure, they have lost confidence in the economy, they have lost confidence in everything. So what did they do? They will fold up and leave. And some of them are not leaving completely. They structure their system, their businesses in a way they can leave something and go out to start watching from outside. 
how it will go. And that is the reason why this hit at home must increase. The next attack on the economy is that we are going to adopt Friday. Not only that, to make sure that those who Ndina Isala will understand that Biafra define who worships in their own territory and the mode of worship. We have only three religions. The Christianity, traditional, and Jewish religion. Any other religion is not welcome until Biafra has been restored and defended. We are now going to decide whether we are going to allow, whether the law of Biafra will create room for any other religion. So Friday is our next target. Every Friday. I want Biafras to understand that this is a price that you must pay. It's a must. You pay this price because it is better than bombs and aeroplane throwing bombs everywhere. We have tried the war, conventional war. We know that during that time there were no social media. We don't have the media presence and everything was propaganda and it ended the way it ended. We've learned our lesson from there. Now we are better. Not only that, we are now in different parts of the world contributing intellectually to the government of our various countries, contributing in development to the government of our different countries, and we want to take it back. Not only that we want to wait until Biafra come, we have applied the sense, the experiences, the skills we have learned in the liberation phase of Biafra. That's why we are ahead of them. So by the time Biafra come, when we bring these skills together, these professions together, Biafra will overtake many nations within five years. But for us to succeed, we must wear leather, iron skin. When this thing started, the attack started on me, I told you people, if it is about me, forget it. Nothing is going to break me down. I am telling you the fact. I am ready times for the times hundred of what I have faced so far to come. I will stand them. I know what I was made of. I know why I joined Biafra Struggle. Yes, and I sir. know what I have went through before joining the Biafra Struggle. I did not come for Biafra Struggle for any other thing than to make history and to liberate Biafra people. Yes. I want to be part of those that you are going to be reading about those who liberated their people. I want to be in the forefront of that history. Oh, but that is what brought me here. And the, whatever it is going to cost for me to achieve this dream, yes, sir. I'm doing it. And then I'm so good. It's not a dream of yes. self, selfish interest. It's not a dream of anything, but a dream to make history and to make this world a better place. I don't follow you. My first speech ever made in my in my political life in Finland in 2012 when I was called upon by the uh my my party to make a speech on the board of the council in my city the first thing that I said which was very you know today I wouldn't say that but the first thing but I was saying it from my mind the first thing that came out of my mind, of my mouth here, was I am Simon Ekpa. I joined this political party and I want to learn something and I want to take it back to my country to change a lot of things. Oh my instead God. Of, instead of saying that I want to be part of this uh, political party to contribute in the development of this country where I'm living, I'm telling you, this was what I said and I did not regret saying it. Oh, I didn't even say yeah. anything wrong. I didn't even say anything wrong in it. At all. And but you know, as time goes on, when I become yeah, well, I went deeper into politics here, I was like, I did I actually make because that was, was a historic, it was something I will never forget. How can you come to join people in politics and all you are saying, all you are thinking about is how to learn to go to your country to develop them? But that was the speech I made. And many people clapped, and many people may not like it. But today. That dream is manifesting and it is not going to end here.
like I said, I promised Biafra people, we are going to bring Finland to Biafra. Yes. We will make sure we modify everything that is going to work for us, not just about bringing Finland. The system we are bringing so far, or we have brought so far, will tell you how Biafra will be. Igbo people say, Aneju Isisearo. Amaro Tonshi. Aneju Tonshi, Amaro Tonshi. I don't know how they say it. Aneju Isisearo, Amaro Tonshi, Amaro Tonshi. So what I'm trying to say is that Nigeria is in our palm. And you cannot fight your enemy and succeed without knowing how to win your enemy. That is the one of the secret we have. So we know Nigeria very well. We know where to get Nigeria and they will fall. And that's why when this economic is going, economy of Nigeria is going down, we decided to provide alternative to our people. Yes. The alternative in, in the, uh, as the Naira is crashing, because from what we are doing, believe me, Naira before the end of this year, before our declaration, Naira will go to 5,000. I'm going to mark my word. Naira will go to 5,000 Naira per one dollar. <laughs> and like I said, oh, there really? is no solution whatsoever that can fix Nigeria economy. Oh, oh, my really? word. There is no so, so long as this particular economic stagnation is happening in the Southeast, there is no solution. Nobody can revive this economy. I am saying it here, record this thing and post it. I said, there is no solution to this particular economic woes that have before Nigeria, which create, which we created. I am proudly saying it because I know the secret from the beginning. That's why we attack them from the seat at home. So there is no solution. And when I'm telling you that it is going to go to 5,000, believe me, so long as the Monday seat at home continues every Monday, the economy, this Naira will go to even 6,000. Believe me. I am telling you the fact. This is just the third year, third year from 600 naira to 700 naira to 800 naira, and you think that they are not only that the seat at home is crashing the economy because I know some people are going on space and they are asking what is the seat at home? What have you achieved? I am telling them now what we have achieved. What we achieved that we have crashed the economy of Nigeria. Not only that, we have proven that Nigeria representative in Biafra land do not have the control over the people we have proven that they have lost the legitimacy they have lost every territorial integrity to biafra we have proven that the biafra people are not loyal to nigerian government forget all this their shenanigan propaganda that oh people are afraid if people are afraid provide security for them if you think that they are afraid and if you cannot provide security for them you have lost everything you are not worthy to be called a government i have said it in one of the uh, in one of the nigeria one nigeria uh, uh, space if you think that samanekba is bad then go and hold your your uh, government response it means your uh, government are not living up to some expectation so what i'm saying is that we must know the weakness of our enemy and attack it and once you identify the weakness of your enemy don't stop make sure you hold it very very tight there hold that particular place never leave it until you defeat your enemy and that's what we're, we're going to, to do so as we are planning we are making sure that we are touching the north to make sure we crash everything about nigeria from the oil to the production of anything that is going to power the economy and then we go through this process we are also providing alternative like now we have launched the biafra digital currency called the biafra coin Ejima, Ejima, you know, a lot of people are calling different names. A lot of people say Ejima, a lot of people say Ejima. We must know the right pronunciation because this is what is going to come to the stock exchange, the global stock exchange. We are not even going to go to the stock exchange at this point. We we'll make sure that there is investment, people are investing in the Biafra coin and official USBT. As you are having the USDT, one usbt will be equal to one usdt this is this is that you can't get anything better than that and it is all skills experiences professions of the biafra people all over the world
coming together to be very innovative, to build what you see today, the kind of government structure you see today. If we can be able to do this in exile, you can imagine what it will be when independence finally comes. And let me tell you, a lot of people who are not supporting this freedom today will regret. You know, some people will say, you can never get your freedom when you don't have the politicians being part of it. The system of Nigeria make it impossible for any politician in Nigeria to be part of your struggle. So that you must know. And if you are in this Biafra liberation for many years and you don't identify this particular point, it means that you are not worthy to be calling yourself a freedom fighter. Because the system of Nigeria can never allow anybody to fight and support you. So it means that you don't even know what, what you are doing. So we, the Biafra government, understand that Nigeria is a system that can never allow anybody into the government to support anything that will break up Nigeria. So that's why we are fighting it the way we are fighting it. And this is the only way we created this particular mechanism that will break up Nigeria. And let me tell you, after the declaration of Biafra, the game will change. We have not declared. After the declaration of Biafra, everything we are going to be targeting is anything the presence of Nigeria government in Biafra land will be destroyed. We will destroy them until even the governors will not have government house. I am telling you the fact. After that, we will rebuild our, our cities. Government, Governor Soludo will run away from Anambra. Like, you know, some of them are telling me to come back to and sit at home or to come back to Nigeria. They are not even living in Biafra land. Oh, yeah, wow. Even the one they call Hopus Odema, who is a, who living in Abuja, he said, Come, come and sit at home with us. He can't come to Biafra land, to Imo State, during the sit at home. All of them are running away. We have not declared, though, we are still in deliberation. By the time we declare Biafra this year, believe me, every resources we have, every penny we have, will be channeled to making sure that no governor will be sleeping in Biafra land. These are the people who have sponsored the killing of our people, killing of our women and children, Amen. destruction of our property, making life miserable for our people. We will make sure we don't give them peace. No, Cho. And every resources that is being generated from this struggle will be channeled to buying arms and ammunition to make sure our city, our towns, our villages are sealed. Yes. So everybody must understand this. And let me tell you, we are ready to fight this guerrilla warfare as long as possible. We are ready to fight it even five years. But at the end of the day, we have Biafra will come. Yes. Because the declaration will be recorded. And by the time the delegitimization, the guerrilla welfare, and the defense of Biafra land will start by December. Those who did not listen to us will look for us. Exactly. Those who think we were joking will know how serious. Believe me, by the time you begin to hear boom, a government has in Ebony State, and the next day the governor is out running to Abuja. And as you are running to Abuja, the terrorist is looking for you there. Abuja is no longer safe. Yes. They are kidnapping them in their houses in Abuja. By the time you are running to Lagos, the bandits are waiting for you there. I am telling you the fact. Because the more we are neutralizing them in the East, the more they are looking for them in Abuja. And let me tell you, this is, a, this is something God has done. You don't know what God has done. We are taking advantage of God's plan for our people, for our freedom. We are not going to miss target. So why now do you think the upsurge of terrorists in other parts of Nigeria, Biafra liberation will rise like a flame as the people who are so responsible, killing our people are running away from Biafra land. They are hunting them in Abuja. It is going to happen. This year, so my people, last December, maybe the last December, these criminals will enjoy in Biafra land. The declaration is this year. Yes. And the heat will be too much. Yes. If you know you have not supported this Biafra liberation, it is now you do. Let me tell you, people that needed, that you needed to, to restore a country is not the entire millions of people. You need just few people to pilot the affair. And that's what is happening. Yes. It will shock all of you. 
who will force you all to this freedom. You are just one person. Only 0.000% percent are the one controlling everything in Nigeria. You don't, you can never outnumber us. The result of the self-referendum will shock the world. By the time we release the result of the self-referendum in Finland, you know, it will ring, it will ring, it, that one is a, another bell on its own. <laughs> so we have the templates to restore Biafra. Not tomorrow now, they will tell you, Samaneta, so I uh, want to declare Biafra in November or December. Oh, you don't declare I'm a what? We are ready to declare it. And after declaring it, we are going to fight. And if the fight is going to take us five years, we are ready. It's going to take us 10 years, we are ready. It's going to take us 20 years, we are ready. That's where we are. And you must make up your mind. But before that happens, we must crash the economy of Nigeria. And we have between now and October this year to make sure that this economy, that one naira, one dollar will be 5,000 naira before October. That's where we are. So my people in Canada, I thank you all for your support. I want to see more better organized Canada the next time I visit. I want to see more people from Canada being part of this liberation. You cannot continue to be in Canada all your life. We have a better future. You can never attain your potential, your highest potential in Canada. Never. No matter how brilliant, no matter how educated, no matter how you are in Canada, whatever you are today is not your best. Yes. You must know this that your best will only be achieved in Biafra. Yes. Your potential can only be attained in Biafra land. Yes. The indigenous mechanism, the indigenous policy in your own country, in your own mother and fatherland is the only place where you can attain to your potential. Yes. Many of you today may have the possibility to be the highest inventor in the world. You have not done it. Maybe you have done small. You think that that's you have arrived. No. In Biafra, the government of Biafra will give you the opportunity to excel and attain your highest potential. Yes. And the time is now. We must fight for it. If it is not you, your children, maybe you did not, uh, you, you are not in a position to achieve that particular potential, but then you give the opportunity to your children and your grandchildren to be part of that potential that you did not achieve in your own time. Create this opportunity for them to live a better life, like in Canada, yes. so that people can come to Biafra land like we are going to different parts of the world. This is what the Western world, America, and everybody is scared of. But you see, they cannot stop us anymore. We have come to know what they know. Yes. And we did not beg them all. They were the one teaching us. They were the one telling us how to live, how to be civilized. We have learned it. Mm -hmm. And we want to take this civilization back. Mm -hmm. They tell us what is freedom. We don't know what is freedom, right? Mm -hmm. They say that it's a human right. We learn the human right. And that's why for someone is shouting, and nobody can touch me. What I'm yes. doing today is to fight my, my people. I learned it from them. Yes. They tell us that there is a freedom of speech. I am doing that, exercising that freedom of speech. We do not know what is freedom of speech in Africa. Okay? They say that it's democracy. We started democracy, but we don't know the name is democracy. They say it is democracy. We are not. We want to lend that democracy in their own way, and we want to take it take it back to our own, or, and start our own life and be like them. So everything we are doing today is something they have taught us, and we have learned it. So why can't we be like them? It is not about skin. Anybody that tells you it's about skin is a lie. It is because you are not courageous enough to confront what is confronting you. It is because you are not brave enough. To confront what is confronting you yes. these people these white people confronted their problem they fought their problem they fought what was confronting them and they won yes and today some of them have become your problem so confront them intellectually and otherwise that's what we are doing today nobody can stop biafra from coming we know how to fight these people and that is the mechanism we are using so forget the uh all those people shouting it's normal thing that people will shout. Not everybody will support the freedom. In Finland today, there are people that are ready to vote for Finland to join Russia back. It is a human choice. You can never change it. There are people that are not happy that Finland is not supporting Russia. 
That is human beings. You can't change it. But that does not mean you cannot do the right thing when you see it. That does not mean you cannot fight for the right justice when you see it. And what we are fighting for is the right for survival. Our survival is in big threat. Our culture is in big threat. We must preserve our culture. Culture is the way of life of people. Any people without culture has perished. And what they are trying to do is to wipe out our culture yeah. and so that we have no value. We will never allow that to happen. Oh, our people. culture must be preserved. Our existence must be protected. And our life must be protected as well. Yes, sir. That's where we are today. So when anybody tell you, tell the person to go to hell, you know what you are fighting for. Yes. You know your right. That right is what you are protecting. It is enshrined in every international instrument from the UN Charter to any government, any country in the world have that right enshrined in their constitution. And that's what we are doing. We are not going to fight any ethnic group. We are not going to fight any group in Nigeria. We are fighting Nigeria government and fighting their terrorist army. And every forces that carry gun, we are fighting them. We will never use our gun against any individuals. We never use our gun against any group. We never use our, guess, our guns against any ethnic group. Our guns goes directly to those who wear military uniform, police uniform, DSS, custom, any uniform that carries gun in Nigeria to kill our people, who have killed our people for many years. And this, our brother called Pakashmi Opara, is a survivor of the Abash shooting, where they reported 150 person killed. But he is here as a witness, eyewitness, saying that people that died there were more than 150. And everybody knows, knows that. But Amnesty International reported 150. For no reason. Nobody has gotten justice till today. No family of those 150 so reported has gotten justice till this day. Nobody. Nobody has been arrested. No police officer has been arrested. Nobody has been prosecuted till this day. But you know what? It's a sacrifice that Biafra has made. Yes. This Biafra government has taken responsibility. Anybody that is killed, we will revenge it. Oh, what we are doing today is to make sure that those people they killed in cold blood, their death is being revenged. Yes. We're going to defend our land that it will never happen again. That's why we are taking the measures we are taking today, making sure that we attack the economy of Nigeria, destroy it, crash it, and make sure that at the end of the day, Nigeria will crumble. By the time we start to fight them, there will be no money anywhere to purchase arms to fight us. Thank you, people, and again, I will rest my case here. Thank you, may God bless you. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, my God, My fellow beer friends, boys and girls, men and women, our foreign observers, our neighbors from the Yoruba side, Middle Belt, Ladies and gentlemen, now you heard it. You have heard from our Prime Minister, a man who has stuck to his guns, a man who has stuck to his words. Since the year 2021, we came with a seat at home because he knew the blueprint he was working with. All the naysayers out there who insulted him to say the seat at home was not working. They said the sit at home was ineffective. They said he was punishing the people of Biafra with the sit at home. But before your eyes, you can see what is happening in the zoo media. You can see what is happening in that zoo country. The zoo economy is gone. The Nigerian economy is falling, as someone told me. They said it's not yet gone, but it is falling. Like the London Bridge, it is falling down. Lord of mercy, my fellow beer friends, I want to assure you that the sit at home is a very, very effective tool. At a time of warfare, you must learn to have a disciplined army and a disciplined people. If you have a disciplined army, victory is assured to up to an extent. But if you can have a disciplined people, then I can assure you 
that your victory is guaranteed it is a bonus before your eyes you can see what is happening all across the country called nigeria the economic hardship the economic strangulations happening all across that zoo because the people out there they are not disciplined their stomach is not disciplined they cannot discipline their flesh now there is hardship there is poverty in the land the economy is dwindling the naira is going down the dollar is going up their purchasing power is low their minimum wage is low their take-home pay every month is low but the price of goods and services are going up a time when even the so-called middle class with the savings they have in the bank they cannot hold on anymore they are now doing what they call the jackpa syndrome jackpa means to run to run away to go on yes so our prime minister we thank you very much for giving us updates giving us encouragement and also you know making us to know where we are and where we ought to be and where we will be soon well everybody is eager and waiting and we believe in Biafra, we believe in freedom, we believe in you, we believe in God. We believe in the power of nature. What can bring us Biafra? So many things up put together. Well, the Woto Woto is still part of it. And that is natural. <laughs> oh yes, our men on ground are doing wonders. And we please urge you to share, like and uh, subscribe to our channel. God bless you all.